Hi, Richard Knudsen here again, and in this session, I want to talk about round-robin record assignment in Dynamic CRM 2011. Now, a round-robin record assignment is a fairly common business requirement. It's often applied to lead records, and that's what I will show here, but the same technique really could work for any record type. There's a venerable tradition of round-robin lead assignment in Dynamic CRM, and the first article I saw on the topic was by Ben Vollmer. And if you search for a phrase like the one you see here, it'll definitely come back in the search results. I picked up on it, generalized it a little bit, and also recorded a video showing how to do it. And you can see those links here too. Now the approach that Ben and I described in these articles was how to create a CRM 4.0 workflow that assigns lead records automatically whenever a new record is created. And the technique works fundamentally the same way in CRM 2011. But what I'm going to review here is how to do this with the Dynamic CRM 2011 dialog process. This is a little different, and there are definitely some business requirements for which the dialog approach might be a better fit. For example, suppose a sales manager wants to periodically refresh leads for his sales reps. You can imagine a number of leads effectively held in reserve, and whenever sales reps have some extra time on their hands, the sales manager runs through a process like the one I'll show you next, selecting leads from the reserve category and assigning them consecutively to various sales reps. But let's switch to my demo CRM organization now and see how we can do this in Dynamic CRM 2011 using a dialog process. So now let's switch to my demo CRM organization and take a look at how this can be done in Dynamic CRM 2011 using a dialog process. First, here's my list of users. I'm currently signed in as Mr. Sales Manager. I'm associated with the root business unit, it's Acme here, and you can see I've got two other users, East Salesperson and West Salesperson. Each is assigned to correspondingly uncreatively named business unit. Now let's take a quick look at my lead records and notice that they're all currently assigned to this unassigned leads owner. That's actually a team I created for the purpose of designating leads eligible for this round-robin assignment. Now, this is important in this case because this is not an automatic process. As you'll see next, the dialog process actually builds a query for leads assigned to this owner only and then walks me through the process of assigning them one by one to any users participating in the round-robin assignment process. So how do I run the dialog? The approach I took was to write the dialog process for the user entity, and I'll explain why in a minute, but in the meantime, I'll switch back to my view of users, and then I'll select my record. I'll click Start Dialog on the ribbon, and then select the Assign Lead Round Robin process here. So when the dialog kicks off, you can see the first page of the dialog has two prompt response pairs. The first one this is a drop-down list of the leads that are eligible for this assignment process. Now I'll be deliberate about this and select the first one and then respond with a yes to the second prompt which basically just asks me if I want to go again. I'll go ahead and do this four times consecutively and if you watch carefully while I'm doing this you'll see that each time the previously selected lead is no longer in the list. To the fourth time, I'll respond no to the assign another. And then we're done, so I can click Finish. Now let's switch back over to Leads and see what happened. You can see here the results of the round robin lead assignment process. There are basically three owners getting assignments here. There's a team called House Leads and the two salespeople. You can see the first lead went to House Leads, the second to West Salesperson, the third to East Salesperson, and then the fourth lead I assigned went back to House Leads, 
started the process over again. So what we'll do next is take a look at how I built the process so you can understand why it works like this. So now let's take a look at how I built the process so you can understand why it works. So navigate to settings and then the process center. Select processes here and I'll select the assign lead round robin dialog. Here's the one that's written on user and let's deactivate it. So when I open the dialog in the dialog designer, you can see in the properties section that it's available to run both as an on-demand process, that's what lets us run it from the ribbon, and importantly here as a child process, that's what lets us give the user an option to run it repeatedly. I'll show you how that works in a minute, but for now let's minimize the properties, give us a little bit more room here. Note that the steps are all contained within three stages. And I'll collapse them here so you can see the structure. I'll expand the first stage now, which basically does two things. It builds the query for unassigned leads, and then it conditionally displays a page asking the user what to do if there are no unassigned leads. I'll go through each of these in turn. So if I click Set Properties here in the query, you can see that the query itself is pretty straightforward. These are the leads currently assigned to the unassigned leads team. And I was careful to give this statement label a meaningful name. You'll see why that's important next. When I'm building queries and dialogues, I can always use this mini advanced find UI here to design the filter that I want and the columns I want to include. I can click find to see the records that are going to come back from this. Let's close out of here. Then in the second part, let's examine this conditional block here. Notice that this if condition uses the statement label from the previously designed query. That's the unassigned leads. If I click on the link to examine what this condition looks like, you can see that the statement label from the query is actually exposed here in the local values section. So here's my unassigned leads. Queries are super important in dialogues, and you can see that they've got this records property. This is designed so you can tell how many records came back from the query. In this case, if the number that, of records that come back is equal to zero, there are no eligible records, so we need to build this little page here to ask the user what to do, and then if uh, they don't want to proceed, then we can just stop the dialogue at that point. Now let's go on to stage two. Stage two is pretty straightforward. It displays the main user experience, the page with the two prompt and response constructs that we saw when we were running the dialogue. The first one is the one that presents the drop-down list of leads. If we go into this prompt and response, the properties for it, you can see the statement label here is selected lead, because when the user is done with this, one of these leads will be selected. Here's the prompt. I could put tip text in there if I wanted to. The response type is an option set, but importantly, rather than hardwiring this with the defined values, we want to use the query CRM data option here and get those values from the query that we've created. And that's why we build queries so much in dialogue processes, really, so we can build flexible processes that change as our data change. I could change this up if I didn't like that created on date there. That's not adding much value. I can just get rid of it. Don't need the separator anymore. So now we've made some changes to that. Then in the next prompt and response, notice I've called the statement label here repeat with a question mark. So in the third stage, we'll use that to determine whether or not we want to call the process again recursively. That's the option to repeat we gave the user. So let's collapse stage two here and now take a look at the process logic that's all included in this stage three. Okay, stage three is probably the most interesting, so let's expand that and take a look at that. It really consists of two conditional blocks. The first one, I've got selected here, the first one figures out whose turn it is to be assigned the selected lead. You can see that this lead counter value 
is set to 1, then the lead is assigned to West Salesperson. If it's 2, to East Salesperson. And if in this Otherwise block, we assign those to the house. And notice that inside the first two conditions, there are steps to increment the lead counter. You can see that here. And in the second condition, you see that here. But in the last conditional block here, the otherwise, you can see that the counter is reset to one. Now, all round robin processes really implement some version of this fundamentally similar logic. Now, we'll come back to where that lead counter comes from in a second. That's critically important for the round robin type of process that we want to implement here, but let's take a look at the second conditional block. So I'll minimize this one. This is what gives us our ability to repeat a process. So we branch according to what the user said they wanted to do. So if the repeat response label is equal to yes, then we use the link child dialog command to call the same dialog. That's why we made this thing available for calling as a child process, if you remember from up in the properties section. Otherwise, we stop. But now, let's go back to that first conditional block in stage three and figure out what that tricky lead counter thing is all about. So I'll click that link here for the first condition to see what I can find out about it. Now, remember, the dialog was written for the user entity. You can see that from here. If I drop down this first column, you can see that user is the primary entity for this process. But everything here in this related entities section, these either have a one-to-many relationship to the user entity or many-to-many. -many. And for our purposes, we only really need to care about the ones that have a one-to-many relationship to user. So. These are parent entities of the user entity. I created a custom entity called counter, and I created from it a custom one-to-many relationship to user. So if a user record is a child record of a counter record, then a workflow or a dialog process running on the user record will effectively be able to reach up into the counter record, that parent record, grab the value of a field, and do something with it. And that's what we're doing here. So I'm exploiting that ability of the process, the running process, to go up into the parent record. And I've got a field there called lead counter. And if it's equal to 1, that's that first test there. And that's what we do there. So we do two things with the value of that field in the parent record. Well, first, you've just seen we do the conditional testing here and here to see whose turn it is to get a lead assigned to them. And then we can increment it so that the next time the process is run, it'll advance to the next person in line. What does that update look like? Well, here's the update step. And you can see here we only see the parent entities. But here we select lead counter and click set properties. You can see here we are in the process designer version of the form for the counter entity. And you can see here we're using the increment by operator, just with a hardwired version, a value of one in there, so that we're incrementing it in this case. And that very last step, we're going to update the lead counter record, that's the parent record, by using just the set two. We're setting that to one. Now, I'll close out of the dialog process now, activate it, and navigate back to my list of users, and open up the form for the sales manager, who I'm currently signed in as, remember? And you can see from here how the many-to-one from user to that counter entity is expressed. It's a lookup field on the child form. It's a lookup field. And notice it's populated with a value that is the specific user record, this one, is a child record of this specific counter record. If I click here, click this link, you can see the current value of the lead counter field is 1. But if we run the dialog again, which remember I can do from here because I can run a dialog either from the selected record on the data grid or directly from the form. So I'll go ahead and run it from here again. 
we'll just take one pass through here so you can see how that value changes. So here's my assigned lead round robin. Pick the next one in line. I'll put assign another. I'll respond to that no so we can finish this off. Because what we want to do now is go back up into the lead assignment counter and verify, sure enough, that increment by step has changed the value of lead counter from 1 to 2. And that's probably a pretty good way of sort of getting some intuition about this, seeing how it actually works behind the scenes, how this child record, in this case the user record, reaches up into the parent. It's got this relationship. So this one user record is the single child record of this particular lead assignment counter record. If I wanted to, I could customize this counter entity, look at its one-to-many relationships to verify that we've got one of those with user. There's our lead counter. So this is the custom one that was created. Open that up and I'll change this so that the display option rather than do not display is use plural name. Maybe that display order just needs to have a value of at least 10,000 I believe it is. All this will do is it'll make it a little bit more obvious that there's this parent relationship from the counter record type to the user record type and that a specific record has been attached to it. Let's go ahead and publish these customizations. We'll take a look at that and it should be more obvious how that relationship is expressed. And now once we refresh the view, the form here, you can see that users now appears in the common section of navigation there. And for this specific counter record we'll be able to see that the we'll be able to see that the user that we've been running this dialogue for is indeed a child record. That sales manager user is the single child record of this lead assignment counter record that we're on, that we're using to manage the uh, lead assignment process. And the, uh, the reason that we take this technique, the fundamental problem that this solves for us, this approach of creating this custom entity to track the counter and having it have a parent relationship to the records that we're running the process on. It's because otherwise there's no persistence model in a workflow or a dialogue. One dialogue session or one instance of a running workflow doesn't know anything about the previous running instance. So otherwise we'd have no way of knowing what the lead counter was, what record we should be on. Um, so we can create this persistence in this way by creating that parent relationship and uh, having that parent record maintain that value. So we've got that kind of persistence problem solved with this approach. I thought that was an interesting application of dialogues in Dynamics CRM 2011. And since this is uh, this technique is, is familiar in the workflow context, I thought it might be uh, useful to see it in the dialogue context. So Richard Knutson signing off, and I hope you found this helpful.